gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterwards, Jesus himself sent out through them, from east to west, the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this. Child of the Most High. 
The angel says to her, do not be afraid. And then the shepherds, abiding in their fields, see this entire host of angels, and they are terrified. They are totally terrified. The angel asks them to rejoice in the birth of Christ the Savior and to not be afraid. So here at this very stupendous moment when God the Creator is intervening in our world with the moment of incarnation, the moment when God himself becomes one of us, are the angel's words, do not be afraid. And then in this world-shattering moment, when the ladies arrive at the tomb, and an angel greets them and says, he is not here, he is risen. Well, what do you mean, he's not dead? How, how do people get undead? I mean, this is certainly um, going to be something that's just totally shocking. And in fact, it's interesting because as you go through the other Gospels, when women told this story to the folks that Luke wrote about, they thought the women were stupid. They thought the women had told them an idle, foolish tale. The disciples just couldn't get their mind around it. And yet here again, at a moment when God is setting our world for all eternity by the touch of God's law, comes the instruction, the invitation, do not be afraid. And indeed, in both Matthew and Mark's Gospel, the angel goes on to say, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. But what happened in Galilee? That's where Jesus started his ministry, right? So we have this whole circle of Christ's ministry here on earth. And I suspect since the disciples were then subsequently sent from Galilee into the world, to make other disciples, we can say that this instruction, do not be afraid, is an invitation to give voice to everything that we have seen and heard about Jesus. So I want to invite you today, do not be afraid. And in this troubled world, that's going to take some struggling and some wrestling with our own inner souls. But God has promised to be with us. He has shown through the moment of incarnation, through the moment of resurrection, how much he loves and cares for us and continues to be with us. And so go forth from today, yourself as disciples, and share the Easter message with all whom you love. Amen.